JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for March the 31st. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst uh, here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all the other G10 currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session uh, Wednesday. It gained the most versus uh, JPY, SEC, AUD and NZD in that order while it decked out the least gains against uh, NOC and CAT. The strengthening of the dollar and the simultaneous Tenuous, uh, and the simultaneous uh, weakening of uh, the safe haven uh, yen and the risk, uh, and the risk linked uh, Aussie and Kiwi suggest that investors reduced uh, their risk exposure due to another rise in bond yields. Indeed, although EU indices traded in the green, Wall Street closed in the red with a soft appetite rolling into the Asian session uh, today. US Treasury yields uh, hit uh, a uh, 14, excuse me, 14 month high forcing investors to abandon tech-related stocks. High-growth tech uh, companies are valued based on projected earnings a year ahead, so higher yields lower their uh, discounted present value. The opposite is true when yields uh, fall. This also resulted in lower risk-linked currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi, but also a slide in the Japanese yen. Despite its safe haven status, the yen is feeling the heat of higher US Treasury yields because the Bank of Japan has pledged to keep long and dated Japanese government bond yields near zero. That way, the yield differential uh, between the US and Japan continues to widen and thereby USD yen continues to march north. We believe that the yen is destined to continue to weaken either way. It could do so if yields continue to rise, but also if they pull back, as this may trigger a risk on trading environment, which could encourage more yen selling due to its safe haven, uh, due to its safe haven status this, this time. Overall, we still believe that any declines in equities may be a good opportunity for investors to buy at a lower price. We would consider any pullbacks as, a correct, as a corrective moves and not reversals. We believe that with most major central banks suggesting that any spikes in inflation in the months to come are likely to prove to be temporary, inflation fears may ease again soon. Specifically, the Fed has clearly noted that they expect inflation to meet their goal in the years after 2023, while the dot plot from their latest gathering pointed to no rate hikes even during uh, that year. Thus, with monetary policy expected to stay extra loose, we see the case for investors to re-increase their, uh, uh, their risk exposure at some point uh, soon. Now, as uh, for today, the main event on, uh, the, on the economic agenda may be Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for March. The headline CPI rate is expected to have risen to 1.3% year over year from 0.9%, while no forecast is available for the core rate. However, the, H the HICP excluding energy and food uh, rate is anticipated to have stayed unchanged at 1.2%. At its latest meeting, the ECB decided to accelerate its pandemic emergency purchase program in order to stop any unwarranted rise in bond yields. Under normal circumstances, rising inflation may have lessened the likelihood for more easing by this bank. However, with underlying inflation staying subdued and most officials around the globe suggesting that any spike in headline inflation in the months to come is likely to prove to be temporary, we see the case for the ECB to keep the door for more action wide open. 
Therefore, we don't expect the euro to gain much on a potential jump in headline inflation. On the contrary, due to the fresh lockdowns in uh, eurozone, in the eurozone and uh, the slow vaccination uh, process in uh, in the bloc, we may see it extending extending its uh, recent slide. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the early European morning, we already got uh, the UK's final GDP for the fourth quarter which was revised up to 1.3% quarter over quarter from 1%. Later in the day, besides Eurozone's inflation data, we also get the US uh, ADP employment report for, uh, for March, as well as uh, Canada's uh, monthly GDP for January. The ADP report is forecast to show that the private sector has gained 525,000 jobs, much more than February's 117,000. This is likely to raise speculation that Friday's NFPs may beat their own forecast of 182,000. Canada's GDP is expected to have accelerated to 0.5% month over month from 0.1%. Tonight, during the Asian session Thursday, Japan's Tankan survey for the first quarter is coming out. The large manufacturer's index is expected to have declined to minus 15 from minus 10, while the large non-manufacturer's index is anticipated to have held steady at uh, minus 5. Australia's trade balance and retail sales for February are, are also due to be released. Uh, retail sales are forecast to have slid 1.1% month over month after rising 0.5%, while the nation's trade surplus is expected to have slightly declined. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.